there has to be a sensitivity and an understanding that for us to also say, to, to accept that there may be a continuum of truths. And also the fact that, because I also entered into this process thinking that uh, female circumcision, or as I you know, called it FGM, because I remembered it from like college and seeing it on like Oprah or something like that. Um, I saw it as one thing, as type four. I didn't know that there were more than one type. And I think that, that w there is no nuance and there is no specificity. Because also I think what is often done, not only in you can take out uh, uh, female circumcision and put in any other cultural practice, specifically having to do with Africa, the continent, not the country, um, with even, because I, I think that it's, it's even, even when we clarify that, we end up talking about Africa like it's a country. And even within one country, there are like 42 different ethnic groups that may practice female circumcision, but different types and for different reasons. And we, we also can only really see societally, you know, because I, I only know what I was able to talk to um, Dr. Amadou about um, in terms of like societal structure. We see things, especially even as, as feminist women, from women being seen as second class citizens, but it's hard to understand that perhaps in other cultures that may not be the case. And then also in talking at, to other women who have been circumcised, while it is true that some may feel violated, some may not. And who are we to say you're mutilated? Your grandmother was mutilated. Your great-grandmother. Everything you come from is mutilation, is grotesque, is this, is that. I feel like there's a certain kind of imperialistic superiority that we do have to deconstruct before we start getting into these, you know, moral arguments. <laughs>